Good evening, everyone. My name is Carver Moore, and I'm one of the ministers at the Chestnut Mound Church of Christ in Chestnut Mound, Tennessee. And once again, we're coming at you with another uh, midweek Bible study. Uh, we're uh, the hope is to continue uh, these midweek uh, Bible studies, make them a regular thing, especially for those that might be in a compromised uh, age bracket or uh, have other kind of uh, issue where they can't are unable to assemble with the saints. Uh, our goal, our hope, uh, we're, we're, we're thinking we're going to meet that goal is to uh, be back assembled with our brothers and sisters this Sunday on May 17th. So if you're able, if you're, if, if you're able to um, assemble with us, we would love uh, to see you Sunday. But if not, we're going <clears> to <throat> have our sermon uh, recorded and it's going to be uh, on YouTube just like all these other lessons are on our YouTube channel. So be sure to go and check out that YouTube channel to subscribe uh, so that you'll see the uh, uh, latest videos when we get them uploaded. Uh, but for a few moments uh, in our time that we have this evening, I want to talk about the topic of rewinding your life. Do you ever go throughout your life and wish you could have a do-over on something that happened as recently as yesterday or something as distant as 10 years ago? You just wish there was a giant rewind button that you could push that would take you back in time and give you another chance to correct whatever it was that you did. Unfortunately, we don't have a button like this in our lives. Once we make a decision to do something, that decision is final and there is no going back. So in this short study, I want to offer you some advice on things that you can do that will help you make the right decisions that will hopefully lead to you not regretting them down the road. Number one, I want you to learn to think before you speak. Before you speak, think about the lasting consequences that your words could have. Did you know you have one mouth and two ears for a reason? You're supposed to listen more than you speak, and when you do speak, you're supposed to think about it. Before you blurt something out, just because you want to, think about it first and ask yourself, does what I'm about to say contribute to the discussion in a positive way? way? Will what I'm about to say hurt the person that I'm engaged in conversation with? Friends, our words are very powerful and can sometimes be hurtful things. What we say that might be a joke to us could be perceived the exact opposite way to another person. In Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 29, Paul tells the members of the church at Ephesus, he says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. What should we use our mouths for, friends? We should use them to encourage and build people up, not tear them down. Think about all the celebrities that have had their careers ruined because of one little word that they said. Friends, the same goes for us today. What we say to others can have lasting consequences, some of which cannot be undone because, friends, we do not have a magic rewind button that we can take those words back. Number two, I want you to learn to think before you act. How do you act around people that you just met or those that might be strangers to you? Friends, if you're anything like me, you attempt to strike up conversation with them. Do you start joking with them right away? Friends, of course not. When looking for someone to evangelize, do you start off right away telling them about the gospel? No, you have to allow them time to warm up to you. When you're around someone that you don't know well, do you carry yourself in a humble manner? Or do you walk around like a big shot, for it's like you own the place? In Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse 16, we're told that every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. Friends, before you act on something involving another person, make sure that you take into account all the concerns, requests, and needs of that other individual. Friends, if not, you run the risk of coming across as what we call a Bible beater, and you will regret your actions down the road when you lose the chance to evangelize that individual. So friends, think before you act so you won't have to wonder if you can rewind later. Number three, think before you make a big life, pop, think before you make a big potentially life-altering decision. Think about some of the biggest decisions that you will ever make in your life. They include buying a house, buying a car, getting married, having children, and most importantly, obeying the gospel. How long do we think, how, how long do we think about making this, these decisions before we actually follow through with them? Do we, make, do we wake up one morning and say, I'm going to buy a house today? 
I suppose some people do that, but an investment that big deserves at least a little bit of thought. Think about getting married. Do a man and a woman meet, date, get engaged, and get married all in one day? Friends, I suppose if you read back into history, you might find a case like that, but it would be very, very rare. Friends, it doesn't work that way. Before we make a major decision, friends, it's wise to take the time to think things through so that we won't have regrets later on. Remember, we don't have a magical rewind button. Remember the VCR? I remember when I was little, that's what I would watch uh, videos on. You had a rewind button. You know, when the video was over, you had to push the rewind button so it would be ready for the next time you watch it. Friends, we, in our lives, we do not have that rewind button. When we make a decision, most of the time it's permanent. There's no going back. Once the decision, friends, is made, it's made. Friends, once you, once you marry, you have to live with that other person until death do us part. When we make a decision, big or small, big or small we must follow Paul's instruction to the church at Colossae. In Colossians 3.17, he says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Friends, every decision we make must be done in the name of Jesus. We must pray to Him for strength, pray to Him for comfort, and pray to Him for understanding when we make these potentially life-altering decisions. And if we do that, we won't regret them down the road. So friends, it's very easy to live in the past. We do things and then we catch ourselves thinking, why in the world did I do that? Why in the world did I make that decision? Why in the world did I say that? Why in the world did I act like that? And all we can do in, these, in those moments is to learn from them and vow to do better. We can't go back and change anything. I don't care if it happened yesterday or if I don't, I, and I don't care if it happened 10 years ago. Just use those instances as learning experiences and move on. Friends, the old saying goes, those that do not learn from history are bound to repeat it. Learn from past mistakes, grow from them, and friends, most importantly, become a better Christian. Friends, I love you. The Chestnut Mount Church of Christ, we love you. Most importantly, God loves you. Hopefully, we're coming to, we're nearing an end of this pandemic. We're so blessed. We're so excited to be back in our uh, uh, our physical uh, our buildings with our physical uh, you know brothers and sisters assembled together in a physical manner, and we're just so blessed, uh, friends. I assure you that we're going to be taking all the necessary precautions per the uh, CDC guidelines. Um, so don't have any uh, fears about coming and joining us uh, for worship on Sunday. But I hope that these lessons again have been uplifting to you. They're all available on YouTube. There, We're going to continue to do these, especially on Wednesday nights. We feel like we're getting a lot of good response. People that wouldn't normally be watching are watching, and um, we're just, we're, we're so excited. We feel like that, you know, if, if, if there's a silver lining to this whole pandemic that people, souls will be one. People will want to come and worship with us either at Chestnut Mound or wherever that they have a church in their church of Christ in their community. So friends, we're blessed. Please join us for worship if you have the opportunity or go to your uh, uh, local church of Christ. If they're, if they're meeting, uh, feel free to reach out to us through our Facebook page or through YouTube. Um, and just know that we're, we're praying for you and we're, uh, we're going to get through this and, um, we're, we're just, we feel like things are looking up for, uh, um, for our world situation. So uh, thank you for watching and God bless you.